Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails. Uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out, free to sign up. Check it out. I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everyone is having a great day. Hope you've had a good week up until this point uh no matter what you're going through no matter where you're at in a particular situation uh, no matter how bad it may seem understand that understand that you are if you're still breathing you're still in the fight uh, I cannot stress that enough. That if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Um, now, I want to go ahead and talk to you about uh, a couple of other things that are on my mind. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, don't forget, if you haven't uh, yet uh, sponsored your space in my 25th book, Chasing the Ghost, uh, go down look in the description box click that link and go ahead and sponsor that space for uh there's no minimum sponsorship 50 cents a dollar whatever if you take the time to do a sponsorship we're going to put your name in the book and we're going to let you write a paragraph recognizing memorializing paying tribute to someone that has made a difference in your life so go ahead and do that and be a part of this 25th book celebration also i want to remind you that as uh in commemoration of this being my 25th book i'm also going to re-release in print it's always been uh available digitally but i'm going to re-release in print uh my first book uh, the invisible father reversing the curse of a fatherless generation uh that one goes deep, runs deep, was very dear to me, still very dear to me. Um, and so I'm going to re-release it into print this year. All right, with that being said, let me move on. Uh, heads up, I'm going to be uh, sitting on a panel discussion with Dr. Cleo Manigo, uh, brother uh, Tony Lindsay, and we're going to be talking about the natural proclivity of the mass of blacks to want to push those of us who think outside of the box, who move contrary to the system back into place. Uh, basically, we got into a discussion talking about how vitriolic and vehemently uh, many blacks will insist that blacks who don't operate by status quo get back inside of the box and to what lengths they will go to uh, to ensure that it happens. And where does that come from? What do we do about it? Um, and we're gonna have that discussion tomorrow. So I want to invite you guys. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I know he's gonna be streaming. Uh, I'm gonna try to get you guys the link so that you can check it out. But I'm definitely gonna be posting it on uh, my platforms, including this channel. So stay tuned for that. Now I want to talk just briefly about said topic. If the, the, the COVID pandemic didn't do anything, it showed us just how many people 
are still mentally on the plantation. And I hate using the word plantation. Uh, I think it's so cliche -ish, but um, I have this conversation with a lot of my friends uh, that still hold quote unquote traditional jobs and they call it the plantation. I don't necessarily see a traditional job as, as the plantation. It depends on your relationship with the job. What do you, are you doing what you like doing? Are you being adequately compensated? Are you in a place where you're healthy and whole? And does it allow you the power to leverage what you're earning there to create other opportunities for yourself? If that's the case, uh, not so much. But if you're literally on a job you hate, if you're on a job that has no future, you're on a job that you haven't been able to leverage to create a financial future for yourself outside of that job, then yeah, uh, that's a problem. But we talk about these things. My, my, my thing is the pandemic has shown us just how many people are still buying the smile of the system. I don't want to say uh, a particular person, but you know, the system is normally represented by the idea of white men. So we tend, we tend to talk about the white man, but it's a system and it's a system that favors white wealth. And so we have to look at this white racial caste system and understand how it works. And we have to ask ourselves something we should be asking ourselves with every decision we make is, does it benefit me? Does it bring harm? What are the future ramifications? And anytime that we are doing that, we're finding that there's a large group that are insisting that we simply are out of line. We're conspiracy theorists. We just stir the pot. Uh, we don't know what we're talking to, despite the fact that we're probably the most red group in freaking America. Truly the most red group in, uh, uh, in, in America beyond uh, doctorate, uh, those who hold doctors and PhDs. We, uh, people who are really truly invested, who have taken on a position of knowing our history, knowing our ills and understanding uh, are quite well read. I read, people don't believe me when I say this, but I literally read a hundred books a year. Uh, I started it literally, what's this, 2021, 18 years ago. Uh, I did it as a, it was supposed to be one year. I took a sabbatical and it was supposed to be one year. That year I was going to read 100 books. I read 115. And I decided, man, this is the most liberating feeling ever. A couple of things happened over the course of doing that. And one is I started taking speed reading courses. Um, and so I started taking speed reading courses. And so I started to be able to master speed reading. So that allowed me to read a lot of books. And I, so I still do that. To this very day, I'm reading a minimum of two books a week every year. I mean, every 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 week, and that gives me my hundred plus. And then that's so much more I read: research papers, studies, articles. Um, and then you add all that into the things I write. And so that's just me. Now, the thing is, we sit up and we look at. Like I said, I've done, the moment that COVID uh, became an issue, before it ever really uh, shut anything down, I was doing research on it because of the talk and the narrative. Okay, I saw, uh, to me, what I felt was a fear mongering campaign. Not that I don't believe COVID exists. It absolutely exists. I've done the studies. I know where it comes from. I know where it originates. I know how it was done. I know why it has animal and human reservoirs because I've done the research. I know because it has uh, animal and human reservoirs that there are a bunch of things that need to be addressed and I'm not gonna do it on this channel. But let's just say I've done over a year and a half worth of research uh, on virology in general and the specific behavior of this particular virus and things you should simply know about viruses and vaccines and all these other things. And it allows me to make educated uh, uh, decisions when dealing with my family and their sa safety and their health. Um, and that's important, but it also gives me a chance to share a lot of that with my people. But at the same time, what you find is 
people don't want the truth. They want their idea of the truth defended. They want their idea of the truth protected. They don't want to be challenged to think. You don't truly have a chance to grow mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and intellectually if you're close to the idea that you may be wrong. Every day I wake up, I'm expecting to learn something. And in, in, in that learning, I'm expecting that there are some things that I hold to be true that I might find that aren't true. I have to be open to that or I can't learn. Because if I'm not open to that, I will mentally shut out new truths in order to hold on to old, old perceived truths that aren't actually true. And it blocks me. So what we have to realize is that we have identified with the system at a level that we aren't willing to face the truth. We aren't willing to confront the truth. We aren't willing to sit down and ask some real serious questions about what our country is capable of, what the wealthy are capable of, capable of uh, what the media is capable of. We will not sit down and look at it. We will come up with all types of excuses. It's only entertainment. Those are the experts they should know. Um, and we will ignore history. We will ignore research and data. We'll holler, you know, about the science until the science proves that what we think we know, we don't know. And then uh, anybody can sit up and create something and make it say what they want to say. So, yes, statistics can definitely be manipulated. And they are being manipulated. And the thing is, you have to be in tuned enough and aware enough to be able to know how they're being manipulated and in whose favor they're being manipulated. I mean, for a black person, it really shouldn't be that hard for you to understand. You don't have to have uh, a degree in statistics. You don't have to have a, a degree in any uh, scientific field that favors heavy research, um, you know, uh, bi you know, whether it's molecular biology, whether it's virology, immunology, uh, any of those things, you don't have to. All you have to know is anytime that experts have told you something and said it was beneficial to you, it has turned out not to be so. Uh, and so you should be, if nothing more, aware of what's going on. And this isn't even about the vaccine. Uh, this isn't about, this is about how we behave with one another, regardless of what it is. Anytime somebody appears to be going off the reservation, those who are complacent want to ensure their compliance and will literally become the slave catcher. That is problematic to growth and empowerment because it means that we can't trust a great deal of the people we're with because of the, for the sake of being in right with them, they will cross us out. That's something to be really concerned about. That's something that we should be really aware of, but That's something that we're going to talk about in depth tomorrow. That's something I'm going to be writing about. There's a study I'm digging all into now that's totally blowing my mind. A social experiment that was done uh, through the 40s, through the set from the 40s through the 70s, uh, and it shows so much. Uh, it gives a great deal of insight into what we're dealing with. I don't want to un unveil it yet until I really wrap my head around everything that's going on. But I'm deep off into it. And I mean, everything that I talk about on, as far as social ills and social disruptions and counter social or antisocial behavior uh, is being spelled out in these these uh, social experiments. Uh, and so I'm like, whoa, this is mad crazy. So uh, I'll, I'll be sharing with that with you probably if not this week, next week. But like I said, look for that video uh, with Dr. Cleo Manigo, myself. Uh, Brother Tony Lindsay. We tried to get Dr. Blanchard on. Uh, he's going to be busy and in meetings uh, throughout the day, so he's not going to be able to do it. But uh, we're still going to make it happen. 
on that note, I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. I'm, I'm trying to find somewhere and wind down. It's been one of those days for me. All right, take it easy. Yeah, yeah.